What's good? It's Fever. Today we'll be taking a look at some Bless Online stuff, going over some gameplay, and just giving my thoughts on different parts of the game. Everything that you're seeing comes from the Bless Japanese Rebuild project that I've been playing on, and there will most likely be some differences to what you are seeing and what we'll be getting next month. Now I wanted to start this entire video off on a really positive note, so the footage that you're currently seeing is me running around in one of the many cities in the game on my mage with the UI hidden. Obviously you can make up your own mind about how you feel about the graphics, but I wanted to start this video off with highlighting my absolute favorite part about Bless Online, and that is the scale and weight of the structures. I find that in a lot of games their buildings and their cities and stuff just feel like western pop-up towns, like they're just really nice veneers with no real weight or depth to them, even if the areas that they're part of are massive. Bless feels different, which is funny because in a lot of cases in Bless, like the doors aren't actually doors, they don't go anywhere. It's more of a veneer than other games, but I think the scale just makes it feel a little extra. Even though much of what I've seen is just like generic Hamlet number seven and generic castle number 203, it kind of works with their understated aesthetic and they're just executed and put together really well. Sometimes there's some funny scaling of specific objects objects that you find within the cities that you'll have a good laugh at, but I think that the city and town designers did a really good job. This next little chunk of gameplay shows off some light platforming in a pretty cool place thematically. You can kind of see this ominous red light in the distance and all these floating crates and barrels with these floating islands chained up. There is some light combat. You're going to see them be fighting a couple vultures here and there that happen to be a level or two higher than me, but they go down really easy. On the way to max level, most enemies that you find in the world map die in like one or two hits with the gear level that the game makes available to you. In fact, I might overlay a different clip, but a lot of the armor acquisition that you find while leveling up is done through a vendor selling you level locked gear generally for like every 10 levels. And while hopping from these floating platforms to floating platforms didn't really do it for me, but I've been playing a lot of Guild Wars 2 recently, and I know that there are people that if you need to jump in order to progress, that they're just automatically going to love that aspect of the game. And I think that it shows that there is some variation in the design to how they do certain things. I'll go ahead and be quiet for about a minute to showcase one of the cutscenes the game just is absolutely littered with throughout the main story. I'll try not to keep it on long enough for you to be spoiled, but you can see kind of the animation and the graphic style and just the quality level of these cutscenes. <laughs> Now this next bit here shows some pretty basic mob killing. I've swapped my abilities to mainly iced themed attacks to kill these reindeer. The way classes work and will work even in the North American and European version is say you're a mage, you have a much larger amount of abilities tied to your class than you have available at any one point in time. And you can choose which abilities you kind of want to create a limited action set so that you can Specialize is probably too strong of a term, but the same class houses the framework to be a fire mage or a frost mage. And I know I need to point it out and some will be happier than they should, but the game contains a frost firebolt spell. Now killing these reindeer, you may also notice that I start with no quest, but after I kill a few, a hunting quest pops up. These are grinding quests that are attached to most mob types that appear when you've killed enough of them, and then they have stages where you need to kill more to get more rewards. And this is a simple and pretty intuitive way to move all of those filler side quests of go kill 10 boars to a game system that you understand early and just replaces the need for having to create quest copy for each of those things. So you may have noticed in that last clip that the gameplay itself wasn't super smooth. I don't want to be a bit of a downer here, but performance has been an issue for the game in the past, and it's my primary concern and issue that I have with the game and I hope is addressed when we get our version of Bless. It's kind of hit or miss where you experience these problems, and sometimes it's just wildly inconsistent, like the same area may give you problems today, but not tomorrow. 
What you're seeing in the background right now is a flight path, which also suffers badly from performance issues. You're taking a scenic route, but it is rough. You see a lot of the performance failings in full effect here. And unless you turn off all draw distance options, which I really shouldn't need to do with a high-end system, and even then there are issues. These flight paths are one of the main ways that you're going to be getting around. You're going to be seeing this type of travel all the time. There isn't a lot in the way of fast travel in Bless to shift this train of thought into something about the game and not just venting. You will be walking or taking your mount most of the time. This goes along with an auto path system, but essentially these flight paths are something that you're going to be using a lot. It does give you another look at that scale of the buildings that I like. And I should mention, in other versions of Bless, you could buy items with real money to teleport you to dungeon entrances when you use the queuing feature to avoid running to dungeons. I think that entire line will get a mixed reaction from different people. And a little quirk of the game that I want to mention, it's a bit separate, it's something that I see a lot of people point out when they see other gameplay of Bless, is this type of phasing that the game uses. So areas, depending on where you are in a quest line, what level are you, etc., display differently for different people, you know, if you're not familiar with phasing tech in MMORPGs. Now, when you encounter these areas, you generally get a little bit of a hiccup, followed by this blue pulse, and then the game will adjust to your phase or version of the area. Now this allows you to use areas like a main city as a set piece for a quest without impacting everyone else there, making it you know get overrun with soldiers or something. And this type of phasing definitely has pros and cons, but if you've ever seen that blue pulse, that's what it is. It's signifying that you're going into a phased type of area. This area you're seeing here is the first formally recognized dungeon of the game, but it's not quite a dungeon like you're used to. The game does have Holy Trinity style dungeons, tank, healer, DPS, but this is more just like an instanced PvE area of a harder difficulty that can be tackled solo on level. It's scaled to be a little bit harder than what else is available in the game. It's instanced, it's linear, there are bosses that drop a higher quality version of gear, which on a side note, also will give you set bonuses. Something cute throughout these type of dungeon things were these traps. Uh, in this one particularly, there are these trip wires that I was able to disarm on my mage, as well as these spike panels that shot me up in the air and damaged me and kind of lined certain areas, areas around the first boss fight and found throughout the rest of the actual dungeon. Like I mentioned before, the game does have more dungeons, and a lot of these dungeons that you'll go through in like a story mode, either solo or with like one or two people, will actually have a higher difficulty later on that will require a group, but I find that there are a lot of people, like myself, that enjoy these harder solo areas that are story significant. But uh, yeah, I guess that is going to do it for me. I know with Bless Online coming out rather soon that people are interested in seeing what Bless is all about, but also because it's most likely about a month away, maybe you just wanna wait and see because it should hopefully be different enough. I'm actually going to put one of those YouTube card survey things in the top right. Just let me know if you wanna see more from Bless from the Rebuild Project. I do have a max level character and also a ton of unused footage. I don't wanna talk much about our version until it's playable. This video is a bit more casual than what I tend to do. To be real, it's it's a strange balancing act to show a game because as a content creator, you want to create the most visually appealing video or you want to show something in a good way. And in gaming, that generally means looking for the best shots and showing the game in the best possible light with like using the cinematic or the official trailer or even supplied B-roll from the company but that, I'm just like struggling because that's just not representative. But I also don't want to go out of my way to show the game in a bad light. I kind of just want to show the game if that makes any sense at all. So I tried to use unedited chunks of gameplay, warts and all, and I would really appreciate any sort of feedback here. But that's going to do it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.